you ever go through phases and periods in your life where you just have reoccurring nightmares? There are just days throughout the week where you go to sleep and you wake up having had the same nightmare. That's me when it comes to Tottenham playing Newcastle away. I hate going to St James's Park for, for so many different reasons. Most obviously that we just always seem to get battered there. There are so many hefty score lines in my head from the last couple of seasons. But nevertheless, third game of the season for Tottenham. One win, one draw. Hopefully we can keep that unbeaten run going. When we head up to Tyneside, it's going to be a very, very tough game. But as always, I'm going to go into it with a completely positive attitude, positive mindset, with full belief and full faith that Ange Postacoglu and the players can get three points from the match. This is my Newcastle preview. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and like the video if you enjoy and let's get straight into it. Okay, so first of all, the Everton result last week was really, really encouraging for Tottenham, I think. Not much could have gone better in that game. There were perhaps we could have possibly even scored more than four goals. Uh, but I feel like we looked like a team who completely dominated from start to finish, created so many chances. And the key difference between that Everton game and the opening game against Leicester is that we were clinical and we were ruthless in front of goal. And that is something we are certainly going to need when we go up to the northeast. Four points on the board. I know we notoriously struggle when we go away to Newcastle. And yes, we have had some horrible results against them in recent years. I mean, the game where we lost 6-1, where Christian Stellini was put in temporary charge of the club, it was just an absolute horror show. And to make things worse, I was running the London Marathon that day and I had my Apple Watch on and I was getting constant buzzing and notifications as I was running around the streets of London and it was just goal after goal after goal for Newcastle. It was so demoralising. So my memories of this fixture are pretty horrible if I'm being honest with you. So I really, really need to see some improvements. It's always so difficult against Newcastle because we play in a very similar style to them. Look, they love the relentless pressing, the aggressive attacking front foot football as does Ange Postacoglu. So when you pit two teams against uh, like that against each other, it can sometimes be a recipe for disaster purely just because so many goals can be conceded. You know, we commit so many players going forward as to Newcastle, but hopefully this time it will work in our favour and we will have those players uh, to our advantage to be able to score more goals rather than concede more goals. Now, I am recording this before Ange Postacoglu has done his press conference on Friday, so uh, forgive me if some of the details are not perhaps completely up to date, but regarding team news, of course, there are rumours going around around that neither Richarlison or Mickey van der Ven or Dominic Solanke trained on Wednesday, meaning their position in the squad could be in doubt for the trip to Newcastle. Um, I did see a story from Destiny Adogi on his Snapchat that showed van der Ven was doing work indoors, uh, which may be the case for Solanke and Richarlison. I think other reports have said Solanke should hopefully maybe be available from the bench, uh, if not a starting position. So that is all positive news. You've also got Benton Core as well, and I believe the concussion protocol means he is back in contention now. But whether Andrew will take the risk on him, I don't know. He's probably in contention to play, but whether he'll start, I'm not too sure. But we may as well discuss how we could line up without some of these players. Of course, the obvious replacement for Mickey van der Ven would be Radu Dragosin. He obviously filled in for him a lot towards the back end of last season when van der Ven was out with his hamstring injury. So he could be called upon, if needed, uh, to partner Christian Romero in that back four in front of Icario and alongside Destiny Adogi and Pedro Porro. However, Mickey van der Ven makes such a difference to our team and how we play that... I've got fingers, toes, arms, knees crossed that he pulls through and that he is okay uh, to play this game because he was phenomenal against Everton. I, I genuinely do think, I've done a video on Cutie Romero, but I'll probably do one on Van der Ven soon as well, that we have just two of the best, most promising centre-backs in Europe and the Premier League at the moment. It's really, really exciting stuff. Um, obviously, to replace Benton Core, we do still have the likes of Pat Matassar, Eve Basuma, who again was excellent against Everton, Lucas Bergvall, Archie Gray, Kulazewski played in a more central role as well. So there's cover there again if we need it. For Solanke, Sonny obviously started up top in that 4-0 win last week. So that is perhaps something that Ange could utilise again if Richarlison is out as well. Uh, but I'd be interested to see if Solanke's still out and Richarlison is fit, whether he does start this time. Because I think the reason used for him, Richarlison not starting the last game is that he wasn't fully fit. However, I think Odebert on the left... 
Johnson on the right and Son through the middle would probably be Ange's preferred front three if he has neither of those players. I've spoken to a lot of people across the week who have said that we maybe need to set up a little bit more defensively against a team like Newcastle, but I don't necessarily agree with that. I, I truly believe that Ange's philosophy is attack over defence and that score more goals than the opponent, and I, I, I don't think he's going to waver from that. I don't necessarily think we'll see a double pivot of, say, Basuma and Archie Gray, probably our two most defensive central midfielders. Uh, I don't think the, the roles of Adogi or Pedro Porro will be limited. Obviously, we know how high up and more central they like to get in our attacking phases. I can't see any of that changing, regardless of the opponent. It will be the same when we play Arsenal uh, after the international break as well. I just, I just feel like Ange is so set in his ways and so adamant and determined to make this style work that why would he change things? It would probably give across the message to the players that he doesn't have complete faith in them for these more high-profile, high-stakes, high-risk games. So for that reason, I wouldn't line up any more defensively. If we started with the same lineup against Everton, I couldn't complain because everyone played really well. I'd maybe suggest taking Brennan Johnson out and putting him on the bench, uh, and then you've got replacements that can come in in that area as well. But the good news is we've got the depth at the moment, we've got the rotation options, so there's a headache for Ange to have there in terms of who he wants to start. But for me, obviously, if Solanke is fit, he has to be playing uh, as well as Basuma, as well as Kulazewski as well. Kulazewski, for me, he's the man I want to highlight in this preview in terms of who could be Tottenham's most important player because he was phenomenal against Everton. The way he carried the ball, the way he uses his body, the way he was so instrumental to our attacking play, I think that's going to be really key against a physical Newcastle team. We need that strength in the starting eleven. You've got the likes of, uh, obviously, uh, Joe Lington, Sean Longstaff, you've got Dan Byrne at the back for them as well. Some big, hefty players. So we need to counteract that in, in some way. And I think Kulazewski is the perfect answer for that because he doesn't get knocked off the ball easily. He carries it really, really well. Uh, and in that more attacking midfield, maybe more central role, he was been, he was really effective against Everton. And I think he can be again. Now we know where the Newcastle threats are. Of course, you've got uh, Alexander Isaac, Anthony Gordon, Bruno Guimaraes and Joe Linton. I'd probably say those are the four players that we need to be most careful of, particularly down the wing. Gordon on that left-hand side, especially with Pedro Porro and how he likes to meander forward so much. We're going to need the cover in that area because if we don't have it, they will tear us apart down their flanks. That is where they love to play the balls and, and, use, uh, and use their wingers in those attacking phases. So Pedro Porro will have to be on his best form, completely aware of everything that's going on and perhaps rely on the help of Romero on that right-hand side as well as Basuma in that midfield as well to cover the threat of Isaac uh, and Gordon. Of course, it's no guarantee because they have some very good attacking players. But Andrew will have worked with the players across training this week to counteract those threats. I back Van der Ven and Romero in duels and battles against Isaac. Uh, but if we are sleeping at any point, Newcastle will punish us. And that is the big key. We, we cannot be naive. We cannot start slow because, you know, they scored after 20 seconds in the Carabao Cup this week. We have to be on it from the very first second. Otherwise, we will end up dropping points or losing this game. And of course, neither me or any of you guys watching want that to happen. We've had a full week of rest compared to Newcastle being taken to penalties in their Carabao Cup win against Nottingham Forest. All I would say in that instance, though, is they did win. So it is very good for their uh, morality and their confidence that they got through that game um, and it's I know it's a trophy that they want to win so they will probably take that hype and the crowd will be right behind them from the off in this game they know it's a big one we know that Newcastle and Tottenham are going to be roughly around the same areas in the Premier League table this season so that leads me into my score prediction I've done a few predictions for people on their various channels this week but I'm going to go for a 2-1 Tottenham win it's going to be unfortunately guys it's going to be a very stressful game very difficult to watch if we go behind early it's going to be very very tough so we need to start like we did against Everton get an early goal rather than how we did against Leicester where it took a while and we sort of just weren't at the races uh, that will be that will be crucial and then finally, we it's no secret that Arsenal are around the corner and winning this game against Newcastle will probably bode really well for that Arsenal game in terms of, like I've mentioned for Newcastle, flip it in reverse, confidence and feeling like you can beat any team in the Premier League. On our day, on Tottenham's day, they can beat any team in the Premier League. But 
These days are often not quite as consistent as we would like them to be. But what better way to start being consistent than going through this run where we've got Newcastle and Arsenal and Man United and West Ham, all of these teams coming close together. If we can pick up some consistent good form and pick up points early in the season in these big games, the sky is the limit for us this season, I'm telling you. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. What are your predictions for the game against Newcastle? How do you think we'll line up and... Is this the first true test for Tottenham and Ange Postecoglou this season to see if they have actually improved from last season? I think that it is. Uh, and if we come through it with three points, I think everybody will start to get a little bit more excited because we have played two poor teams so far. But we'll see what happens. Obviously, I'm hoping, hoping and praying for a Tottenham win. Um, and let's hope that it's a really good weekend for us. Enjoy it. Enjoy the game for those of you that are traveling up. For everyone else watching it along with me, Let's see what we can do. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And as always, come on you Spurs.